I did a video uh, a little while back where I built up a simple software-defined radio using uh, an ESP32A1S and a Talo mixer board that I'd uh, built a while back. I thought what I'd do is build up a proper PCB that combines the ESP32A1S and Talo onto the one board, build it up, and document progress. So here's my homegrown board. I do the layout in KiCad and uh, the fabrication using the Fab in a Box kit. I'll leave a link showing a video I did on how I use the kit. Um, the interesting challenge is, uh, is doing double-sided uh, boards here. Uh, and there's a special trick that uh, um, uh, Mr. Carlson's lab showed me on how to align the holes front and back, which I'll include a link to that too. So one thing about uh, doing you know, sort of homegrown double-sided boards is you have to do your own vias using short lengths of wire. It's, it really is a bit of a hack, but it's a bit of fun. Um, but uh, as you can see, I've got these, uh, for example, if you just have a look here, there's a via right there. And the way you connect the front and the back board is you just use a re resistor clipping and, uh, and uh, solder it on both sides. So before I get started, uh, let's just do a quick walkthrough of the circuit. I, I won't do a complete walkthrough of the circuit. I've done that in earlier videos, but I will just, uh, to set context, do a quick walkthrough of the circuit. So let's go over now and uh, have a look at uh, KiCad and the circuit. Okay, so here's the circuit in KiCad, and let me just quickly walk through each of the sections. Uh, like I said, uh, I've, I've gone through this in detail before, so I won't go through in detail here but I will leave a link to the previous video. So uh, right at the middle of the screen here is the uh, bandpass filter. And this was based pretty much on the QRP Labs bandpass filter, which I'll include a link to. Now I'm gonna uh, build this radio for 20 meters. Uh, so I've got the uh, values, again, taken from the QRP Labs documentation uh, on what are the various values for the, uh, uh, for the transformers and for the, for the capacitors. Um, like I said, I'll be building it up for 20 meters. Uh, so then we move on to this MAR6 uh, pre-amplifier. Uh, and what I'll probably be doing in the initial build is just uh, basically uh, uh, shorting this out and not having the preamp uh, in the initial build. Uh, following that, we have the, uh, the splitter. That's biased at 2.5 volts, and that pro uh, produces a phase, an antiphase um, uh, signal, which is used by the follow-on uh, Talo mixer. So speaking of the Talo mixer, we have the uh, FST3253 acting, acting as the Talo mixer, uh, and you've seen that uh, many, many times in my previous videos. Uh, the quadrature local oscillator signals are supplied by uh, an SI5351. Uh, and then just moving to the left here, we've got the, uh, the detector part of the Talo, uh, Talo mixer consisting of this resistor and capacitor combination. And then finally, uh, we've got this pair of op amps which uh, amplify the audio signal. So moving on down, um, we have uh, right here, uh, this is the uh, core processor that does all the DSP that turns the incoming I and Q audio signals, which you can see coming in through here, and uh, turns them into the appropriate audio signals with the uh, uh, r with the uh, relevant uh, sideband removed, either upper or lower sideband. So this is basically, we've got some attendant circuitry here. We've got an encoder switch so you can, uh, so you can uh, change the frequency. Uh, this little circuit here is involved in the programming. And then we have uh, this uh, little hookup here, which will be for a, uh, a simple LCD, uh, uh, 2x20 LCD or 2 by 16 LCD that I'll be using to uh, display the uh, tuned frequency. So well, let's just quickly go through the build order. Uh, first I'm going to start with the uh, power supply uh, and that for that we have a 3.3 uh, volt regulator and a, and a 5 volt regulator. Uh, next uh, what I'll do is I'll get the ESP32 uh, installed on the board uh, together with the serial programming interface that I mentioned before. And then I want to confirm that I can program the board that, that I haven't uh, messed up something in the, uh, in the, in the PCB circuitry. Uh, then I'll install the uh, LCD and the uh, rotary encoder. 
then we'll get to install the uh, SI5351. And at that point, I should be able to confirm that I'm getting a local uh, correct uh, quadrature local oscillator signal coming out of the SI5351. We should be able to see the uh, display on the screen. And then finally, uh, we'll install the uh, remainder of the radio, the bandpass filter, the uh, FST3253, these, these, this op amp here, and the, uh, uh, the detector circuitry. Now, this is my first time with this board, and uh, there's probably going to be some hiccups. I'm, I'm sure I've done something wrong uh, on the board, but we'll see. Uh, I do like to sort of do the, the board at home first before I send it off because you know, you wait all those weeks and you get a board back and, and I've done this uh, where you've, uh, you've got the pin order on, a, on an SMD transistor wrong or something. So, so anyway, what I'll do is I'll get this board uh, all, all squared away and yeah, we'll do some testing and then probably I'll, uh, I'll get some boards ordered from uh, JLC PCB or somewhere like that. Anyway, uh, let's move on now to uh, where the, um, uh, the power supply circuitry is on the board and we'll get that installed. Okay, so uh, let's get the power supply circuitry installed. Uh, so that basically is down here. We have some, uh, this is where the 5 volt, 5 volt regulator goes. This is where the 3.3 volt regulator goes. There's a couple of vias uh, I have to do here, a couple of uh, capacitors that I have to get installed. Uh, this is where 12 volts comes in. So let's get this all uh, built up and then uh, we can do some testing. Okay, so I've got the uh, power supply circuitry installed here. There's the 5 volt regulator, 3.3 volt regulator. So let's go around and test some voltages. So I've got it hooked up to uh, 12 volts. So let's uh, first confirm we're getting uh, the power supply through. So that should read 12 volts, which is good. And now let's have a look uh, at the 5 volt regulator, make sure that's actually doing 5 volts. There we go, we've got 5 volts there. And then finally, let's do the three volt regulator and that the best place to probe that is right here. So there we are, 3.3 volts. Now the other spot uh, is up here. This is the uh, supply for the SI5351. So that confirms we're good there. And then finally down here, if I can uh, just get the, uh, this is the supply for the um, ESP uh, A1S. So. So all the uh, five volt and oh well, we've got one more to test and that's the half volt at uh, the half uh, five volt rail, uh, which is right uh, down here. That should be two and a half volts. There you can see there. Oh, we've got that in the way there. Let's try that again. So there should be two and a half volts right here. There we go. Two and a half volts. So that confirms all the power supply circuitry is uh, good to go. Uh, what I'm going to move on to next uh, is installing the ESP uh, itself, which, uh, as you can see, goes right here. And uh, I'll also ins install the, uh, uh, the serial um, programming uh, circuitry as well, and then we'll come back. Okay, so I've just discovered my first uh, little uh, problem on the board here. And it's basically, um, so this is the uh, connector where the... Uh, the, the USB serial adapter goes and uh, basically the pins go RX and TX so this is RX this is TX but unfortunately I've got them going to the wrong pins on the ESP32 uh, if you have a look at uh, the ESP32 you can see um, basically so here's RX and TX right here so that's RX and TX but I've got RX going to RX uh, which doesn't work. You have to have TX goes to RX and RX goes to TX. So I'm going to have to do a little bit of uh, bodge wires here to sort of cr crisscross these over. And obviously I'm going to fix the, uh, fix the uh, keycad um, PCB layout um, uh, up on the GitHub repo. But anyway, um, that's a little bit of progress. So uh, I'll get those uh, bodge wires put in. Uh, I'll get the ESP32... Uh, Soldered down to the board, and I think at that point we should be able to uh, try some programming tests. Anyway, that's coming right up. Okay, so the picture's a bit grainy, but you can see uh, I've uh, crossed those uh, those two lines over. 
So now I have uh, transmit going to receive and receive going to transmit uh, as it should be. So now I'm ready to move on to uh, installing the ESP32. Um, just one interesting thing to note, it does have a ground pad on the reverse of the ESP32. Let me just uh, sort of move that into the picture. Uh, so there's that ground pad right there. I won't be able to solder that on. Uh, I don't know if it'll have any effect on the performance, but uh, just a quick note, uh, I, I, there's no way I'd be able to. Um, I don't have an oven, so uh, I'm, not, uh, I'm not able to install that on. But anyway, let's move on to uh, getting that on the board, and then we'll come back. Okay, so there, as you can see, the uh, ESP32 is soldered down. Um, it was relatively uh, easy, a little easier than I thought. You just basically put your, uh, there's, uh, these little crenellations here, you put your the tip of your soldering iron in the crenellation and uh, touching the, uh, the trace and uh, the solder flows quite easily. I have checked continuity across all of these and they, it all does appear to be good. Uh, and then continuity from, so this, for example, is the SDA and SCL lines. I've checked for continuity elsewhere. Um, so a little bit fiddly, but uh, appears to be all good. So I think we're ready to uh, see if we can breathe some life into this uh, ESP uh, and uh, connect it up to the serial adapter and uh, see if we can program it. Okay, so uh, I've got the uh, uh, the USB uh, to serial um, uh, programmer connected here. Uh, as I um, did in the previous example, I've got the RTS line coming out from here into the board, uh, and that allows with these uh, two transistors here uh, auto programming. So you can uh, you don't have to sort of do the the uh, you know hold hold I O zero down and then press E N to to program it. Just uh, it just programs. So so anyway. Uh, that all appears to be working, so let's just move over to the programming environment so you can, uh, can actually see that for yourself. Um, so you can see there uh, I've got uh, serial output coming from the ESP32. I've just got a simple program here that, um, uh, that uh, uh, it's supposed to blink an LED, but I've just got it uh, um, going to GPI tw GPIO21. I have actually confirmed that that is pulsing. Um, and then the final test is when I hit the little button that I've got set up on the board here, it should reset. And there, indeed, you can see it does reset. So what that means is the uh, ESP32 uh, is all on the board correctly. Uh, now, of course, I could still have some problems with some of the lines. So what I might do is um, get the, uh, um, the SI, uh, uh, SI5351 installed um, in the top part of the board. Let me just show you where that is so you can see it. So just panning down. So this is where it goes. And uh, I've got some little test programs that allow me to uh, to set the frequency. Um, and so what I'll do is I'll go ahead and do that. And then that should confirm at least that uh, most of the functionality that I need is good to go. And um, so anyway, uh, let's get that done and uh, come back. Okay, so as you can see, I've got the uh, SI5351 board plugged in. Uh, I'm probing off clock zero. Uh, and I have this, uh, let me just pan up so you can see that, this little Arduino program, uh, which comes from the, uh, basically the libraries that uh, come with the SI5351 uh, uh, library. Uh, and basically, uh, this is one of the APIs and basically, um, what this does is uh, the frequency output is uh, this number here, 30, times the um, uh, crystal frequency, which is 25 megahertz. So 30 times 25 megahertz is 750 uh, million, and then it divides it by this mult. So 750 million divided by 100 is uh, 7.5 megahertz. So we can see that. Let's just move over to the oscilloscope so you can see that for yourself. So as you can see there, we've, we're outputting 7.5 megahertz. So let me just change the uh, mult to uh, 50. So that should double the frequency. I'll just reprogram that. Take a, it'll take a little while. And we should see that go up to around about uh, 15 megahertz. It's just programming now, and there you go. Um, 
let it stabilize for a bit. There we go, 14.9997 megahertz. So that confirms that uh, not only the SI5351 uh, is installed correctly, uh, be but because it's programmed through I2C, it confirms that the I2C lines are correct too. Um, so just panning down to the, um, to the little board again. Uh, what I'm going to do uh, is I'm probably going to wrap this video now. It's getting, getting a little bit long. Uh, but we're uh, on a good footing here. Um, obviously, the ESP uh, is correctly installed. The SDA, SEL lines are installed. I'm able to program it. Uh, what I can move on to now is kind of the radio side of this. Uh, and obviously, there's a lot of circuitry that I have to get installed here. The kind of the, the band pass filter, which is up the top. I've got the... Uh, uh, the Taylor uh, mixer and detector here to get installed. But uh, I'll wrap this video now. Uh, there'll be a part two coming shortly as I get the other components installed. Hope you enjoyed this. Uh, more to come.